pull the curtain? I will pull the curtain in a minute. That made no difference. Let's see if this will make a difference. That made no difference. <sighs> anyway, hello, good evening. And welcome to the now earlier time of seven o'clock for the rearview mirror. Um, and the whole reason we have to do the earlier time is because young sir over there with his dad has to have uh, is in a routine and has to have a bath and go to bed. So hello everybody. Hello everybody. So, without further ado, what we're going to do today is oh, one thing before I forget. You wanted to know about weirdness that goes on. Here's a, a, a weird one I found, and this is some idiot on TikTok. Um, a guy called Javier claims to have travelled to year 2027, uh, where humanity has become extinct. So we're talking six years in the future. And he films little videos in Spain. Um, I think it said it's Valencia. Uh, do, 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 do. I don't know where my daughter's gone. She's just upped and gone. It is Valencia. Um, and it shows all the shops and restaurants and everything completely empty. Nobody's around. Nobody's in the streets. There's no cars, nothing. Yet he forgot that six years from now, if everything's dead, how come the internet's still going? And uh, how come there's all the electricity still running? But he, he's telling all his uh, TikTok viewers that uh, it's real and he's filming from the year 27. 2027. 2027. So... All right, Javier, nice one. We believe you, mate. You all right? Cold. Cold. Oh, you, you, nah. Right, so today, for you, for use, for anybody who's watching this and for anybody who's watching it on YouTube, we are going to do... She's off again. We're going to do, what was it, the... Uh, Top 10 Wilderness Horror Movies Based on Real Life Events. So. Jurassic Park in at number one. Yeah, because Jurassic Park is based, actually, technically, it is based on a real life event. Mm -hmm. But only a certain bit of it is. Just the park bit. The park bit and the researching the uh, DNA. Yeah, just the park bit. Dinosaurs aren't real. God. Researching the DNA is. So, 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 what are all these fossils? Planted. Planted. What by creationists? Yes. So, what other things have creationists been planting to make us fool us into thinking we've been here a lot longer? Sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rock. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Volcanoes. So creationists planted volcanoes all throughout the world to make us think. The Earth sold. So, so what, what are these volcanoes then? Fake. They're, they're fake. Plasticine. They're made out of plasticine. Anything else? Uh, birds. Bird. Birds aren't real. Birds. They're just fish with wings strapped onto them. Fish with wings strapped onto them. You mean like flying? What do you, what do you think they can't wing? Anyway, so moving swiftly on away from the world of creationism, um, then at number 10 is Razorback. And now I've seen Razorback, and there was another one I think that did Razorback too, but it looks like there's a few films with the same title. This one is based on a novel by Peter Brennan. Same title, Razorback, and it's based on the real event that happened in 1984. Um, I'm sure most of you out there watching this know about it. Um, the Dingo Baby. That makes it sound funny. It's not funny. The Dingo Baby is funny. Um, the film starts off with opening footage that uh, makes you think there's an investigation going on into the murder of Azaria Chamberlain. And this is the, the poor baby who was allegedly carried off and devoured by a dingo. So, this film... If you've seen the documentary, there's a whole documentary on the actual thing where a woman is yeah, camping right, yeah. and, and she said she left her baby in the tent asleep she, and a dingo took it. That's right. I'm just going to tell. Oh. Um, on August the 16th, 1980, as the Chamberlain family enjoyed dinner with other campers who had set up in the Uluru, not to be conf confused with 
Lieutenant Uhura, um, mm. campsite near Ayers Rock, they heard their infant daughter scream. Um, the child's bassinet, is that like a crib or something? Yeah, it's okay. a Moses basket. Oh, okay. Um, which was situated just inside the opening of their tent, it was empty, uh, and baby Zaria was missing. Searches so got discovered a trail of paw prints uh, accompanied by marks of the bassinet, uh, but Zaria was not found. Um, when the Chamberlains, who I don't see what this has got to do with anything, but they're seven day Adventists, it's just a form of religion, who were mistaken for Jehovah's Witnesses, returned home. Yes. That has nothing to do with anything. No, it doesn't. But because they were, and this was, bless you, early 80s, Australia, well, anywhere in the world, uh, rumours spread that they'd sacrificed <laughs> their daughter to atone for the world's sins, or because she was a devil's child. But you've got to remember, in the 80s, this is, you had all sorts of weird films like The, the Omen and uh, Rosemary's Baby and all that stuff. So people are going to think religions they don't know anything about the devil. Um. De that was in my Ouch. Um, Dennis Barrett, the coroner, sought to dispel all these wild stories, um, but he was replaced by another coroner called uh, Jerry Galvin, um, and all his findings were overturned in court. And this is what got me. There were so many things. All, all the new um, coroner just, it was a complete stitch up from start to finish. Because um, at the end, they're the only people who really know what happened were the people who were there. Um, the baby's mum, uh, mother, Lindy, was tried, found guilty, and spent two years in prison before she was released. A review of her case by a royal commission found that laboratory findings had been misrepresented or even falsified. For example, Azira's blood, uh, blood, blood, that was found in the family's car, turned out to be the remnants of a spilt milkshake. Um, and the baby's blood that was found on nail scissors was identified as the industrial chemical Dufis 101, which is sprayed on during the manufacture of the scissors. Um, the Northern Territory Supreme Court fully exonerated Lindy and her husband, Michael. Um, That's nice. Of hmm, the parallels to the Chamberlain's horrific experience and that of the film's main character, Jake Cullen, are clear when he babysits his grandson at his home in the Australian outback, a razor back ball breaks into the house, making enough with the child to munch on it. Charge of murdering the child, Jake is finally acquitted due to lack of evidence. And then the plot goes on. Um, he seeks vengeance against the razor back, clay, uh, blaming the ball for the destruction of his reputation. Um, I've seen razor back, and the ending of it is PDL. Um, not, absolutely nothing to do with the real case. Please uh, refer it to the ending of Moby Dick. Yeah, I suppose it is. Uh, they, they've said that the um, the whole thing of the, the, him going after the Razorback as he sees it as his, he was the cause of his downfall is uh, they compared it to Moby Dick. It's it is worth a watch because, like I say, I've I've seen it and I've seen the second one, which has got absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with the first one. No. If you like, if you like, if you like shock horrors, you'll like Razorback. It's it's worth a watch. So, I just I've seen this as well. Um, let's go back into it. I don't have anybody there. Oh, there's two people there. Hello there. Oh, Jesus. Hello there, Andy. And hello there, James. Hello there. Say hello to Andy and James. Hello. Yeah, there was um, right, I think it was Razorback two, and I think there was even a third one. I've seen the second one, and that was. The ending was set in like a, I think it was a sawmill or something like that. And it wasn't just one or two. There was about three or four of these massive Razorbacks running about. Um, yes. Hello, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. So that was number 10. So now we should do number nine. Do you want me to do number nine or do you want to do no I'll do number nine. Now, I'm sure most of you must have. You're tired. So what, you're just going to sit in at pretty or so? Be um, just one second whilst I put the world on hold. Alfie, could you please do me a cup of tea? Oh, yeah, he asked me to go. I didn't do it. I waste away without tea, you see. Thank you very much. And do you want one, please? I'd just be Ayla without tea. I start my um, um, the keto diet along with Lynn's tomorrow, so that's the end of milk and naughty stuff. Sugar. 
So we're having a. Uh, just, get just get one of the big ones out and come to Pigs, thank you. So it's the end of everything, and apparently you get flu like symptoms two weeks in. Do parents get that? Apparently, they get like flu like symptoms two weeks into their veto. I don't think your dad never mentioned don't get anything about it. But there was a lady I was talking to, or she was on the thing, and she did keto diet. And she said you get, she got, well, she got flu like symptoms anyway. Anyway, in at number nine, alive. So those of you out there who um, are watching us either here or in uh, uh, YouTube land, you must have heard, heard or watched the film Alive, and based on that, they, the uh, plane coming down in the Andes, wasn't it? Now I went to the cinema. When this came out with my uh, cool, blimey, my old girlfriend Laura, that shows you how long ago this came out. Um, 1993. Now, alive recounts the horrific ordeal experienced by a rugby team. It was Chilean, wasn't it? Chilean rugby team and the players' family members and friends as they fly to the match in Chile. Um, it's based on Piers Rock. Here's Paul Reed's 1974 book, Alive, and it's the story of the Andy survivors. Um, the book's horrifying, and and what actually happened, because I've seen loads of documentaries about it, or Paranormal Investigator, hello, um, into it, and the things that those people had to do, and they didn't want to, but they had to. It's just horrible. Anyway, I think they had several. Um, the actual incidents on which the film was based are even ghastlier and more horrendous than the film itself. Um, I, always remember, I always remember one bit of the film. Hang on a second, we have a wild buffalo over there. Raise that call. It's plugged into its bottle. There you go. Um, I always remember one bit of the film that got me. What? What? I can see it when I open. When I have a scene, I'll show you. Weird. Um, there was a woman screaming and yelling all the time because she had massive internal injuries and stuff. And one of the blokes in the end lost his rag and, and said to her, will you shut that? You know, we're all in the same boat. And they sat there and really had a go at her. And she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And she was dead by the morning. I, I felt so bad about yeah. that bit. Anyway, um, not much of the plane survived um, the crash because, you know, generally as a rule, planes hitting mountains. Um, and it occurred on Friday the 13th of all auspicious days, October 1972. I was born in 1972. Um, and lying on, on the 14th. Not Ooh. in 1972. Lying on its side on the snow covered mountainside, its nose crumpled, its ring sh wings sheared off, and its tail pulverized, the remains of the fuselage were smashed and dented. Um, Roberto Canisa, or Canisa, another surviving member of the rugby team, also wrote an account of the ordeal in his own book, I Had to Survive. And he recalled the irreversible decision that he and three others made. Uh, it was a choice that cost them, as he put it, their innocence. Cut off from vegetation and animal life, the survivors lacked food, um, he reported. Although they knew the answer to what to do, um, the bodies of their friends and teammates were preserved outside in snow and ice because they buried them in the snow. Um, and these bodies, unfortunately, contained vital life-giving protein. Um, nevertheless, they resisted until it was too terrible to contemplate what would happen if they didn't. So nine days following the crash, hunger got the best of them. And this guy has said he will never forget, oh, the first incision nine days after the crash. Uh, he explained how th uh, himself and the other three men cut thin strips of frozen flesh from the dead and... Uh, laid them aside on a piece of sheet metal to be claimed and consumed when each of the men could no longer bear to go without food. 27 out of the 45 passengers aboard the flight survived the crash, but an avalanche killed off an additional eight. Oh, Christ almighty. Not only do you smack into the Andes, and there's another, there's an avalanche yeah. on top of that. Friday, the, Friday the 13th, yeah. The slide also carried off the dead upon whose flesh the men had been feeding. <sighs> They were screwed, weren't they? Yeah. Um, Kinesa recalled uh, stealing himself to do what needed to be done, and then he decided to use one of the bodies of the newly dead. The survivors were not rescued until December 23rd, 72 days after the airplane crash. If I remember rightly, I think it was two of them set off 
to go and try and find some sort of um, civilization. And I'm sure they did eventually. Um, but I think one of them died. But I may be, don't remember, I may be misquoting here. Anyway. Oh, okay. This is nice. Um, at home, once again, Kanesa confessed to his mum we had to eat our dead friends. And she said, that's okay, sweetie. Um, and then the son also told his father uh, that he would next inform the relatives of those he had eaten. Oh, Jesus. No, keep reading. Of, of his deed. To his surprise, Kanesa found them to be understanding and supportive. Now a paediatric cardiologist, Kanesa attributes his survival to his family and his desire to see them again. Mm. Yeah, that's a... It is quite a quite a harrowing film um quite a harrowing story yeah alive don't want to laugh but yeah when we're in need we will eat we will eat each other the arctic explorers also became cannibals yes they did uh needs must when the devil cries i like chicken flavor meat do you know what james there's a, there's a very good reason um that we're friends and that you watch this show along with andy it's because i think we've got the same warped and very jaded sense of humor so do you like... Well, it's like that guy that had a German Shepherd and it fought off a bear for him when he was lost in the woods. And then uh, he just got too hungry, so he killed the dog and ate it. What did he eat the fucking bear? I think the dog killed the bear. But it scared him away from eating him and then he was like, thanks, mate. What a bastard. Anyway. Oh, this, this has got to be one for your cabin fever. No, I've not seen this one. I'm sure you have. I'm sure you said you've seen it. I've seen the cabin in the woods. I've seen what I've got a tattoo of. That's first evil dead. That's first evil dead, yeah. And the cabin in the woods. I might have seen cabin fever. You have to read it. Do you want to see her um, uh, her uh, Ash and the Book of the Evil Dead tattoo? Um, it's the Necrocomnicon. Necronomicon. Necrocomnicon. Necrotelicomnicon. If you read this world. Oh, yeah. Oh, you can put your coat on. What lovely one! I'm freezing. I'm pissing out. Doobie 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 doobie. That's the Necrotelli Company gone from Ash and the Book of the Evil Dead. There you go. I know you just thought that my sweet innocent daughter here. Well, this one anyway. Um, would have tattoos. Um, great movies and great show. Yeah, I must admit, I like the show. Never seen the film. So, Cabin Fever. Do you want to read it? No. That's psoriasis. That's psoriasis? Nah. That's, 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 <laughs> you can read that. I was only seeing it as a psoriasis. Psoriasis? Psoriasis. Oh, Cyrus. Right, in it, number eight, Cabin Fever. Psoriasis. Thank you very much, young man. Cup of tea in my Batman. Head. You never see me and Batman together. That's all I'm going to say. So, do you want to read it? It is. It's a cool tattoo. I just have dragons and phoenixes. and. I got a squirrel. Mandalorian before the Mandalorian series was ever even invented. I got a squirrel. You got a squirrel? On my leg. Yes, you have got squirrel. Yes. Um, a ginger one. You have got a Don't like grey ones, they actually kill off the ginger ones. Yeah. Not coloured in yet, so it's just a white one. So it's an albino one or, or a ginger one that's had a shock. A ginger one that's had a shave. Ah. Anyway, cabin fever. An eruption of psoriasis resulting in cracked and bleeding legs that made walking impossible and a later infection on his face resulted in his shaving off chunks of his face. What the f Made Eli Roth, the director of Cabin Fever, realise that weird things can happen to your body. Wait, did this happen to the director? I'm just wondering that. i read that again. Wait, wait, yeah, it is. Look, keep reading. These unsettling experiences also helped him to realise that a similar infection would be a great idea for a horror movie. The result was cabin fever, which involves a flesh-eating virus. Can you so, imagine having your psoriasis so bad you can't walk and your face falls off? 
face off. You get that? You get that right? Face off. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Nicholas Cage. Yeah. Since and he walks up to his kid and he's like. Still your kid's face. Since the movie is a horror film, audiences know something horrific will happen. But the infection of a mm. hermit who stumbles upon a dead dog and becomes a bloody disfigured mess as a result is also certainly a clue that disgusting and terrible incidents are at hand. Why did they say at hand? Rude. I was going to say. Ooh. Ooh. What? I do that without hand and look like I'm giving somebody the... Yeah. I actually, I don't know if you remember, but when I was younger, you used to say that you like your hand because you can just swear at people and you don't even, like, you just put your hand up and they're like, oh, look at him. I'll tell you, I'll tell you guys out there, something at gen before I do any more of this, something that genuinely happened. <laughs> um, when I drive, if people, if, if people, you know, wave, I used to use that hand like that. My ex, my lovely, lovely ex, their mother. Turned around and had a go at me one day because she'd have complaints of me sticking my finger up at people. Namely, her sister and her sister's <laughs> lovely husband. And it was just me waving. So well, I. I, I well, they are, but they're not together. Good. And then I had to t teach myself to wave that hand because idiots in small village in Somerset thought that this was me going like that. But now it is. Now I just go up half an hour. I'm swearing at you with what would be my little finger, actually. Yeah. That's my little finger. This is my little finger. Because I've got five fingers, although you can't see it. Right. Let's get back to what we were talking about. Yeah. Um, since the movie's a horror movie, blah, blah, blah. We know something disgusting is going to happen. Dead dog. Tramp. We're here. Terrible incidents at hand, especially when the hermit vomits blood during a visit to the cabin of college students vacationing in the deep woods. When one, because you do, don't you? You think, let's go and have a holiday in the middle of fucking nowhere in a rundown wooden shack, miles away from anybody, no cell coverage, phone coverage, nothing. You, you would, wouldn't you? I actually would. To be honest, I yeah. could probably live like that, but. Um, I'd make sure I, I had had a gun. Oh yeah. Um. Or dogs, big dogs. So this mate. Wolfs. Wolfs. Wolfs puggers. Do you know what we saw in the park? We saw half pug, half French bulldog, and it was proper. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. He had an yeah. angry face. That's what, what it looked like. That's what it looked like. It's more wrinkles. <laughs> so, no so a frog. You saw a frog. A frog. Yeah. <laughs> um so yeah this tramp turns up uh dip, 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 dip. when one of the uh vacationers karen it had to be karen uh develops an infection oh wow between her legs oh can you imagine getting that between your legs the i've had a karen between my legs she was my midwife oh, okay um the audience receives another clue that things are probably going to get much worse before they get Better if they ever do get better. Oh, wait, oh God, can you imagine a, a, a flesh eating, eating virus on your on your, on your nun? Can you imagine just standding up, coughing too hard, and your clitoris falls off. The entire thing. Your landing you gear. Just, you kiss the floor without using your mouth. What's that? It looks like a <laughs> Put some trousers on, Karen. Yeah, unfortunately, it's, it's yeah, Somerset. It's really James, he's followed the show for quite a long time. I feel like I say this every time I see his name right. He, 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 if, for some reason, he likes the show, which I'm really pleased about. Cracker. We're all crackers. We're all crackers, yeah, yeah. And uh, Andy, I worked with him. Yeah, I know Andy. Andy, he's I don't nice know guy. Andy, but I know him because when we have the quizzes and stuff, he gets like 100%. Yeah, that's because he's a brain box, isn't he? Yeah. You're a bottom. It's just uh, James. So, where were we? So, uh, oh, um, uh, was it Wolf Creek. I know Wolf Creek was yeah. a real story. I'm sure it's yeah, Australia. Wolf Creek was a, a real story. Um, is this about the people that used to eat other people? It, it, he was a yeah yeah you know but about he it. He used don't to you? eat them. Or did he just kill them? A bit like Leatherface, without the eating. Uh, Do you want to read it? That was based on a real thing as well. Yeah yeah yeah. In in, in, Mike, in, Michael in, Gein? in was it Mike Dean? 
Oh no, that was um, Ed Gein. That Ed was Gein. Uh, Psycho. Was based on him. No. Psycho. The furniture made of flesh. That was Leatherface. Yeah, and Psycho was also based on him. Oh. Hmm. Ed Gein, what well, the the world's first captured um, psycho serial killer. So do you want to read about Wolf Week? Wolf okay, Week. Wolf Week. Wolf. Wolf Week. Wolf Week. Will Wheaton. Wolf Creek National Park in the Western Australian Outback is the setting for the movie Wolf Creek, funnily enough. In 2005. Have you seen Wolf Creek? Yes. Good? Yes. Well, somebody's seen it. Directed by Greg McLean, British tourist Liz Hunter. I'm not going to say their name. No, Liz I'm Hunter really. and Christy Earl uh, are the, are the, and their Australian friend, Ben... Mitchell. Mitchell, yeah. Okay. I thought there was an N in it. Are victimized by Mike Taylor, who poses as a good Samaritan after the trio's car fails on the Great Northern Highway, leaving the leaving them stranded. In reality, as Joanne Lees points out in her autobiography biographical biographical, autobiographical. <laughs> account of her horrific ordeal, No Turning Back, my journey. My journey. The British, the movie's British tourists were Peter Bacconio. Bacconio. And Lees. And herself, herself. Joanne, Joanne Lees. They were the real people that this happened to. Okay. Who were traveling the Stuart Highway at night, 2,000 kilometers from Wolf Creek National Park. They were between Alice Springs and Darwin, and Darwin when a mechanic. Bradley. Bradley John Murdoch. Bradley John Murdoch called them over to advise them that their vehicle's exhaust was throwing sparks. Murdoch shot Okay. Murdoch shot Falcon Fal Falcon Falconio. Yes. And bound Lees, placing her in his own four wheel drive vehicle when he well, con yeah. while he concealed Falconio's body. She escaped while staying hidden in the bush until Murdoch gave up looking for her. Did she escape hiding in the bush? Yeah. It's a good job she didn't trim then while she was on holiday. Considering she was in the outback and it's like desert over there. And she hid in the bush. She found the bush. Ew. <laughs> um, later, she was assisted by two truck drivers after she'd walked back onto the highway. Murdoch was subsequently arrested, tried, convicted, and sentenced to serve 28 years to life in prison. The movie's Mick Taylor, who's the bad guy, is also based on serial killer Ivan Millant. Ivan Millant, who during the 1990s took hitchhikers whom he picked up in North South Wales, New South Wales, sorry. Into the Belango State Forest, where he tortured and killed them. McLean added elements of the actual cases involving, involving Murdoch, Lees, Falcino, Millant, and Millant's victims. victims only after he'd, heard, he'd learnt of them. Following. <laughs> Look at the blurb. Blurb. Following. Following his writing of the film's original script, art imitates life, it seems, and vice versa. I can remember when that the the Wolf Creek one came to went to it became national news, um, and I remember this is a good movie. Um, Suspiria. Yeah. And I remember that other one. Where was it? Uh, was that? It's like a trip, a massive like, light trip really weird the director focused more on sound and light than he did on like <laughs> plot um who was it it was the other one mick taylor yeah i remember reading about that and he did some pretty horrific things and it wasn't the second guy he had he had quite a few tourists before that had gone missing and they were all they found them hung up uh didn't they in like a, a shed that he had there where he just gradually tortured them as you do you know You either? Yawned. Yawned. Wolf Creek, disturbing account of Aussie serial killer. Yes. Um, 
Did you ever read about Ed Gein? Or did you ever read about Ed Gein? Like Ed Gein. He, I know who he is. He yeah. had a belt made of nipples. Nip, women's nipples. Women's and nipples. And he had an entire suit made of women. Women's skin, yes. Uh, a lampshade. He'd recovered a chair. He had... Some books. He had a box full of dried clitor rye. They like raisins. I don't know. There was no photos. I would have thought they'd be like raisins. The only room in the house that was fine... He was trying to make a very strange Christmas cake. his mum's room. Yeah, yeah, he his had... mum was completely abusive to both him and his That's brother. Right. He killed his brother. He did kill his brother. Set him on fire. And so um, it was an accident. Yeah. Mm. And then after his mum died, first of all she had a stroke, and then he didn't kill her. Like just let her carry on being abusive, and then she did die. And he inherited the house, which, funnily enough, after all said and done, and he was arrested, they tried to sell it on. Right? Yeah. All of a sudden. But down. Yeah, I'm not, not oh, surprised. Oh, like, oh, how'd I'm that happen? Surprised. But yeah, so the whole house was just a tip. But he kept his mum's room immaculate. And they think because of psychologically, he was like, mum wants it this way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Also, he, he, was gone. he murdered a, a lady pub owner. It was and a then, barma- yeah, the barmaid. No, she yeah. owned it. Oh, she owned it, yeah. 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 And then she car- he carried on going there. And they were like, oh, I wonder where she is. And he was like, oh, she's staring at mine forever making jokes and people were like they were concerned but they didn't go to the police uh, you... and then when the police went there she was hanging upside down with her head cut off yeah there was various body parts all throughout the house i've seen the um, crime scene photos um he had a wall of faces it, yeah yeah it's the the, the the thing that concerns me the most is is not the wall of faces and it? it's the belt of nipples. Belt of nipples. I mean, we've seen the gloves. You made gloves. That's right. Uh, I, I mean, I've been to some biker dudes that have got pretty rowdy. I've had belts made out of studs and this, that, the other. And never have I once looked at someone's nipples and gone, "Oh my god, smash uh, the belt!" Uh, look at the Ooh. size of them. Ooh. Jeez, the areolas on that one. Ooh. Matching ones. Make them into plates. You could have a purple belt, a brown belt, or a white belt. A bit like martial arts, really, isn't it? <laughs> what if you start could, giving them out now. What if you could make a tune? You know, just dry the nipples and then put them on a piece of wood and then bing, 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 bing. Uh, what anyway. else did he do? Sorry? What else? Trying to think what what else didn't he do? He do? Yeah. I don't think... I don't think he ever had did anything... It was bad enough, what he did, but I don't think he ever did anything sexual. He didn't say that he I'm did sure he anything didn't. like that. The nipples are useful if you gain weight. <laughs> wait, hang on. Gain weight. <laughs> I'm, I'm going on my diet tomorrow, so I'm, I'm not going to be... Lens, your nipples are safe. They will not be turned into a belt. Sure. <laughs> One of his first crafts was making those bowls out of the skull. That's right. Yeah, he was... Bit weird. Although, oh, there is a fun fact. He was only charged with killing, I think it was three people out of the seventeen bodies because he'd actually the only one in the No. No, he dug dug a load up. up. Yeah, from because he lived behind a cemetery. Fresh, he freshly by uh, flesh, fleshly, freshly buried bodies. Well, he used to get just bodies, and then he said that it turns leathery, so he tried to get freshly buried, and it's still not the same. And then so he killed. Two people. I think he killed the barmaid he in the pub. The barmaid. Didn't he? Yeah. And then he killed a a shop owner, but he was an idiot because he bought petrol at that shop, and then his name was on the last roll of receipts. Hmm. And so the the son went into the shop, saw blood on the floor, and they looked at the receipts, and Ed Gein was on was the last person. So we sent police there, and then they just found that was it. The lady, not the barmaid, the lady. Just dead. Just hanging. Yeah, and when when they got him, he didn't struggle, didn't try and leg yeah. it. He just sat there and went... Mm. Yeah, and they were like, why Why is this person's face half peeled off? And he was like, just going to hang it on my wall. Just going to decorate. Why do you have this stunning belt made of nipples? Why do you have this entire body made of breasts? Women breasts? Vagina? Why have you got this? I want to be my mum. He wanted to be like his mum. I've known some people who have been mummy's boys. Or then he went to the psychiatric ward, didn't he? He didn't actually get arrested. He went to a psych ward. And then like seven years, I think it was, later, he stood trial again and then he got arrested. 
because he he was batshit, and then they said, actually, I'm feeling better now. Belt of nipples. That's it now. The belt of nipples. Ding 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 ding. ding. Anyway, so that's half chairs. Just chairs made of people. Chairs. In at number six. I've not heard of this one. Um, have you heard of tu Turistas? T U R I S T A S. Turistas. Oh, um, it's a film by director John Stockwell. And before he uh, cast members, you know, for various roles, he warned them all that his upcoming film had lots of discomforts and potential dangers that they would face in the wilderness um, if they signed on uh, to start in a movie, uh, which was going to be shot in location in the rainforest of Brazil. Um, the actor's home would be a tent. Their chairs would be rocks. Excuse me. They would wade through uh, water polluted with bat poop, mm -hmm. and they'd probably be injured. Although he added it was highly unlikely any of them would die. Oh, that's nice. Highly that's going to get me to sign yeah. up. Um, a bizarre incident occurred to Stockwell during a surfing expedition in Peru, uh, interested him in directing Touristas. He'd been robbed, he said, by a group of 13-year-old glue-sniffing kids. So it's like being in North London, really, isn't it? Um, France. Or France, France, all parts of Leeds. Um, and he'd been shot at. Uh, and when he reported the incident to local police, they said he could kill his attackers in exchange for $300. Where was this? Um, Peru. Oh, Peru. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. A bit backwards there. Hmm. Upon his return to the United States, he read the script for Touristas and it resonated with him, he said. <clears throat> In the movie itself, American tourist Alex, his sister B, and Bee's friend Amy are backpacking through Brazil when they're joined by British men Finn and Liam. Uh, drugged during a party. He's smiling. I know, he's smiling his head off. Drugged during a party, they awaken stranded on a deserted beach. The latest tourist has become part of a heinous black market enterprise. There's another film, very similar. Um, the one about the backpackers in Central Europe and they disappear and then and it was, that was a true story oh, what's it called they get taken away and people spend money just to torture them and be horrible I didn't know he um, dressed her body like a deer dressed her body like a deer I'm trying to comprehend why you. Nope. No. Oh, oh. Hostel, yeah. Hostel. Yeah. Thank you. That was it. Sounds very much like hostel, doesn't it? I went to Amsterdam just after watching hostel. And I was like, mm. it wasn't Amsterdam. Um, no, but it was. That's all it says about that movie. It doesn't tell you anything that happens. Oh, Back country. Right. La, 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 la. Hang on, we we have a heckler in the background. Yeah. With arms like an orangutan. Oh, no. hey, are you, are you, stop yelling at the pug, he's done nothing wrong. Hey. Right. Possib right, this film, what was it called? Back 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 Trail. Back Country. Alright, this is number five. Backgammon. Lindsay's eating gammon. We're going to eat gammon after this. Possibly the black bear wandering a provincial park in northern Ontario, Canada, had developed a taste for human flesh and blood. Um, the animal attacked Jacqueline Perry while she was camping with her husband, Mark Jordan, 80 kilometres north of Chapleau. Um, he fell back, stabbing the predator with his Swiss army knife before the bear could drag his... The screen just went... Bloop. Before the bear could drag his wife further into the deep woods, um, Gordon carried his badly injured wife. He fell foot off with a Swiss Army knife. Stab it in the gut. Sorry, <laughs> corkscrew. Hey, you're getting your eye. 
this thing for getting things out of horses' hooves. Have at you! <laughs> Just a foghorn. <laughs> um, yeah, he carried his badly injured wife to their kayak and paddled to the closest campsite where he was assisted by a father and son from Pennsylvania who were visiting the park. Unfortunately, although a North Carolina doctor treated Perry aboard the Pennsylvanian's boat, Perry did not survive the ordeal, so his, his wife died. Um, the couple's horrific experience inspired the movie Black Country. Nothing, uh, nothing to do. Read that again. Back country, not black country, which I was about to say has got absolutely nothing to do with Birmingham, because that used to be known as the black country. The blue shirt. Victoria, Queen Victoria called it black country. Um, see, not what you thought. That's a pollution. Um, directed by Adam McDonald. In the film, uh, thanks to Alex, he and his girlfriend, Jen, a lawyer, get lost during a weekend camping trip. <laughs> In a, in a park. Alex fights a bear, allowing Jen to escape. The bear kills and devours him. But she lives and finds her way back to the shore of the lake where her and Alex beach their canoe and paddles across the lake to a group of tourists and their guide. And although she's got a broken leg in a fall and is much the worse emotionally and physically, she survives. Unlike Alex. Unlike Alex. Right. <laughs> we needed that last bit. He got eaten. Know. McDonald was inspired by open water in which a couple are attacked by sharks but then after they're stranded at sea. I remember that one. Yeah. And he wanted backcountry to be an open water in the woods. He said, however, rather than having Jen be attacked and killed by the bear, he made Alex the victim because he wanted to show the experience that caused Jen to become a strong, independent woman. In the film, he I said... I actually just rolled my eyes. I feel really bad for that, but... What did you do? You said... Strong, you independent out. woman. <laughs> in the film he said audiences can actually see the moment where she becomes strong and faces life for what it is I think you can't be strong but you have to have something traumatic happen <laughs> apparently the general gov governor general Michelle Jean was so impressed by Jordan's bravery that she awarded him the star of courage for protecting Perry this is the real couple in an attempt to save her life at the risk of losing his own, uh, during which attempt he received wounds requiring 300 stitches. Fuck. The governor said that the award is reserved for acts of conspicuous courage in circumstances of great peril. Bloody hell, 300 stitches. That's like that kid. That's right, yeah. Um, so what do you make of that then? Uh, we're, we're at number four at the moment, so we've got... Uh, Field dressed means gutted, ready for cooking. No, did he say that about the man? He talked about the bear. Oh. He was there, but he didn't see he's beyond one of the trees with chef's hat and a set of knives and a sharpening stick. What's this basic I want to pick next? Goldilocks? No. It's Teddy an bears? American program. Yogi Bear. Yeah, oh. Yogi Bear. Yogi Bear with a bad, the hair bear bunch. No, Yogi Bear. Just, Picnic baskets. Just, yeah, just behind the field. Oh, Looks like a walking picnic for me. Oh dear. Um, booby. That's right. Yeah, game booby. Booby. No, that that's my booby. Um, bodom or bodom. Bodom. Have you ever heard of bodom or bodom? B o d o m. It's a Finnish film. Maybe not. Have you guys heard of bodom? Bode, I think it is Bodum. Bodum? Bodum? Bodum, bodum, bodum. Come on, baby, lollipop. Come on, me, wife. A kiss is sweeter than a cherry pie. You want me to read this one out? Yeah. Just... Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Directed by Tanneli Mustonen. Um, Finnish film Bodum, which came out in 2016, uh, is about four young adults who are uh, camped near Lake. Bodum and Java. That's close enough. Bodum and Javi in Espoo, which is a city. That in the toilet, Espoo. Espoo, <laughs> which is apparently a city in Finland's Usima region. There's so many U's and A's in that yeah. one word. W S I M double A. Usima. Double U, not W. Two U's. And the director who'd grown up, to, grown up in, oh, for God's sake. Out of Kumpu. Out of Kumpu. Throughout the events, 
so it surrounded a murder murder mystery constituting an intriguing story but he also saw a problem with making such a film how could you make it a universal topic such as young people camping and offer something new so basically he wanted to get a run of the mill film and put some a, a twist in it um visiting the scene oh where a real murder uh, happened in 2004 um I went down a trek during the trial and noticed that there were young people out there looking for that same headland, and that's where I got the idea for the movie. So it's people on a, what do you call it? There's these people who like going and visiting places of famous murders. Yeah. Weirdos. Weirdos, yeah. I think it's weirdinism. Um, that's the great answer. Paranormal investigator, bitch. Sorry. Ghost, buster. There you go. I'm an adult virgin. <laughs> no, I'm not. One of my kids is here. Um, in the film. No, have you not seen that video? Yeah. In the friend, in the film, friends Norris, Elias, Atta, and Ida go camping near Lake Bottom. As Flippinick, as that lake in Finland is called, they aren't just vacationing. No, they want to reconstruct the murders that happened there in 1960. Unfortunately, they themselves encounter a killer, and interesting twists follow. Although the ending of the film may strain its audience's credulity. So basically... It makes shit. Yeah. And she's cold. Mm. Yeah. It may she, be worth I reckon a watch. she's making my soap. In at number three is Black Water. I'm, I'm just going to go past the finish one because that sounds like so many horror films that are out now or thrillers are out now where people go and investigate and try and uh, put together. I like Chewy. No, he's put his tongue away now. Just staring at them. Yeah, there's loads of thrillers and films out now where people go and investigate previous crimes and then end up getting off themselves. So it's, mm. Let's have a look at Blackwater. I don't think Blackwater was based on a real... Uh, no, it's Blackwater Down, wasn't it? Black Hawk okay. Down. Oh, Black. Okay. Sorry? There's two, isn't there? Yeah. Two Black Waters. Yeah. Well, this one, in 2018, was written and directed by Anu Trauke and David Nerdick, and it's set in an Australian mangrove swamp, which is full of hungry crocodiles. And we are both. Um, Did you know hippos walk on the bottom of the lake? That's right, yeah. That's mad. Yeah, they, they held their breath for a long time. And then they just like... They're the, the most dangerous, one of the most dangerous creatures ever. Sorry, dog. Yeah, don't dog? they just attack for no reason? Yeah, they yeah just attack for they're no very reason. territorial if you get near them, near them or near mm -hmm. any of the um, baby stuff. Is it they're the, the, the most dangerous animal in Africa? Yeah. Crazy. It's because yeah. um, I haven't been there yet. Did you hear the music then when you went <laughs> on that one? Um, anyway, uh, during a vacation, Grace and her husband, Adam, and Grace's sister Lee taking a crocodile show. And then the next day during a fishing trip, a crocodile capsizes the boat they rented. So I take it it wasn't very happy then looking at a show and pointing at his relatives. Going, so, so that um wait, 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 wait. I just like, flashed that. Whoa, what's the word? Deja vu? Whoa, yeah. I remember reading this. And then, and then reading that his arm got bitten off. They didn't get bitten off in this. But I remember reading their arm's guide and I was like, and they got bitten off. Wow. Deja vu. Sorry, carry on. Oh, he's killed anyway. Um, what the hell was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next day, fishing trip, crocodile capsizes the boat they rented. And their armed guide is killed, leaving the hapless vacationers alone with the swamp's top predator and no help in sight. Um... <laughs> According to an article in The Guardian, um, there's a place called The Wet, an actual place called The Wet. Sorry, say it again. The Wet. I'm not going to go there. I'm to, I'm, uh, there's a place called The Wet, and I think we'll leave it at that. Quite frankly, my daughter's sat next to me, and I'm just not prepared to make some it's of those It's in jokes. the Northern Territory, Dad, not the Southern. Not the Southern. Oh, that's all right then. See, she beat me to it. Um, the wet located in Australia's northern territories is notorious for the occurrence of tropical cyclones, monsoons, stifling humidity, um, and it floods the Finnish River, turning dry land to mud and partially submerging trees. 
Oh, the area's crocodiles have killed as many as a dozen people, including tourists, over the last two decades. And the reptiles' attacks are the basis of Blackwater's storyline. Um, have you seen it, Blackwater? No. Any of you seen it? Just It sounds like, what's that other crocodile on Lake Placid? Blackwater was okay, so was Cruel and Rogue for Croc Creature Features. I was, I, saw, I, I was going to watch Cruel, and then I saw the trailer turn, and I was like, mm, nah. Um, there's only some certain horrors I like, and that's I don't think you'd really call them horrors, but I like um I like I love the you underworld like films. Stuff, I I love my sci-fi and fantasy, um, but I I really like the um yeah the underworld films. Really like those. Um, Under Armour. <laughs> Under Armour. So uh, you know who's wearing an Under Armour jumper when they got stabbed? Our neighbour. Which neighbour? The old one. The old house. That one. The old house. In the old house, the one neighbour that got stabbed. What neighbour got stabbed? I'm not going. I can't even say a name. Tell me later. They had an under up. Oh, of course, yes, 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 and they had an Under Armour thing on. Yeah, she had an Under Armour. It didn't do a bloody good job, did it? Um, was that Lake Placid Classic? Cruel for it? Yeah, yeah, we just read that. Um, I, I think that some of these did movies you know? that are creeping into the oh, that's why you were the number one spot, Wait, I, I, I think they're in the wrong place. Oh, would you like to say hello to Mc? No, he's not. He's a caterpillar. Very hungry. Dink. Very hungry caterpillar. Very pudgy belly. So, that is McFinley. Are you going to dish up your dinner? Mm. Yeah. So, well, we've nearly finished. It'll be fine for now if you want to dish up your dinner. What I said was the ones that have, we've been re reading as it's getting closer to one, I don't think they should be there. I think they should be in the upper levels, like 10, 9, 8. Yeah. Because I don't think they're worthy mm -hmm. of these top spots. <laughs> so, what is next? Oh, okay, seriously? It hasn't been made yet. Cocaine bear. Cocaine bear. I'm not making this up. Cocaine bear. Jesus Christ. Oh I'll, I'll read it out here. Cocaine bear hasn't been made yet. Its uh, production is scheduled for the summer of this year. Um, the movie script is based on a 1980 accident incident in which a parachute drugs parachuting drug smuggler. Finding it necessary to lighten his load, dropped bags of cocaine as he drifted over Georgia. Oh my God! And a 175-pound black bear helped itself to the unexpected treat, dying as a result of an overdose. Oh, you want to read where it died? A, a few months later, a hunter found the bear dead in the Chattahoochee, Chattahoochee National Forest in Colombia. Its belly, I feel its belly, literally packed to the brim with cocaine. According to the animal's autopsy, the bear suffered cerebral hemorrhaging and respiratory failure, hypothermia, renal failure, heart failure, and stroke. Jesus Christ. Uh, the, the bear was stuffed and sold to various owners, including country singer Waylon Jennings. Yes? Did you read about it? It's not very nice what happened to that bear, it's is it? Nice. It's not very nice, is it? I think it's, it's not very nice what happened to that bear, is it? No, it's not. Is it? Do you think it? Is it? Is it all right? Oh, it's all right then, is it? Okay. Then. Um, Big scary bear. The bizarre event attracted the attention of producers Phil Lord and Chris Miller, who planned to produce the movie as part of a deal with Universal Pictures. Cocaine Bear, due out this summer. There we have it. And then at number one. I've just got visions of a huge black bear going around with loads of white bits around there going. Well, if you not look, it's pimped out in the, in the photo of it. It's got a hat. It's got a raccoon skin hat on and a necklace made of. Ch That's a chain. Oh, Jesus. And a raccoon skin. You got a problem? You got a problem? Are you going to watch Cocaine Bear when it comes yeah. out? <laughs> you got a problem? Are you going to watch Cocaine Bear when it comes out? Cocaine Bear. Cocaine Big phenomena: sharks, bears, squirrels on crack, and recently wild boar ate millions of euros worth of coke. Uh, in Spain and went berserk. I've seen 
The animals. Is it a razorback ball? That's not to me. Hang on. Um, I've seen a new host that Andy said. <laughs> I've seen the um, think I've seen the uh, uh, videos of the, of the ones that drink uh, uh, eat the fruit and it ferments in the stomach and they get absolutely <laughs> smashed. There you go. There's there's our newest host. Hang on, turn it around a bit. More. There you go. It's our newest host. So yeah, Cocaine Bear. Uh, James is going to go and watch it. Cocaine Bear. Shall, shall we read number one out? Shall we? Yeah? Shall we read number one out? Yeah? Yeah. Ow, ow. Okay, we'll read number one out. Do you want to read number one? Uh, he can't read yet. Do you want to read number one on his behalf? On his behalf? Oh, okay. uh, the Widow. I'll do it. Oh. Me when Sheldon signs his life insurance over to me. During the spring of 2021, The Widow is set, so it's going to be released any time now. The Widow is set in a thick forest north of St. Petersburg in Russia, where people have been disappearing in real life for 30 years, often without a trace. And the few bodies that have been found were invariably naked. <gasps> you <Yeah. laughs> Um... Now that a teenage girl has vanished, volunteers search, search for her among the dense trees and bush. Mysteriously, they lose, they do, they lose communication with each with one another, leading the local population to wonder whether a strange incident is further work of the limping widow's spirit. Um, the movie starring some Russian people whose names I can't pronounce is based on the strange fact that 300 people each year actually do go missing in this part of the country. And as in the film, when the bodies of the dead are discovered, they are sometimes naked and bear no signs of violence. They bear no signs, that's because the bear was off its tits on cocaine, of violence. Ironically, the crew began filming on October the 14th in 2018, which is also known as the Holy Virgin's Day. It's my birthday. Yeah. When folklore claims, the forest becomes a deadly location. As far as we know, folklore doesn't account for the corpse's nudity. Um, <laughs> He's a really fat wee. Like, but this, so warm. Apparently, this is going to be released in North America on DVD and Blu-ray in March. So, so any time this month, or what's left of it. Oh, dear. Don't mind to really be out now. Oh, dear. Right. That... That actually sounds like something Immaculate I'd watch. Immaculate conception. That does sound like something I'd watch. Yeah, monkeys and elephants get drunk on fermented fruit and dolphins pass around. Yeah. Puffer like, fish, you get high, yeah. Um, did you know that? Dolphins pass around puffer fish, you get high. Did you know that, young man? Daddy's talking to you. Did you know that? They, they have puffer fish and they go boop on the snoot and they go, and then they go, yeah, dude, and they pass it to the next dolphin. They do. Yeah. They do. Yeah. They, they do, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lam uh, lemurs pass is it millipedes or centipedes? Yeah. Millipedes because they're poison yeah. mixed them high yeah. of the aroma. Really? Yeah. Lemurs pass around millipedes because it makes them high. Well there you have yeah, it. I think it is top ten horror films that allegedly top ten that are based on real life events. Sorry, my turn. Um <laughs> Are we, are hey we... guys, uh, sorry. Hey guys, um, this is my show now. Uh, we're going to talk about top ten milks that you can buy. Number one being breast. Number two being formula. Number three being another type of formula. Number four being maybe another type of formula. Number five, cow milk. Number six, goat. Number seven, pig. And number eight, alpaca. Number nine, bat. Number ten, dog. Or number eleven, hippo. Yeah, in a special special mention. Hippos have pink milk, guys. Uh, are, are we done? Uh, <laughs> are you done? Say aliens. Aliens. Oh, nice. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> there you go. You yeah, have baby aliens. On that note, um. Some, I think I'd quite like to see that. I'm not going to... Uh, cocaine Bear, James, you're going to have to tell us what it's like. You, you're I'm just watching gonna have Cocaine to. Bear. I'm going to watch that number one one about the forest. 
It might be out. You can Google it because it said March. But have you noticed that we've all got forests in them? That's because spooky and mysterious things happen in forests. Spooky, scary and skeletons. I can remember. I don't know. I used to roam the forests of England when I was a teenager. I know, but you always notice that it's America, you think China, Australia. Can someone like stand up? Or the Amazonian rainforest. There's, there's a, a really disgusting horror film. Can you take us on, please? Can you take us on, please? There's a really disgusting film. I've seen a clip of it, and that was bad enough that I'm never, ever going to watch it. But, James, you may have watched it. I don't know. If not, The Green Holocaust. That's all I'll say. I'll leave that there for all of you out there. Have a look at that, The Green Holocaust. It's <laughs> all, all, all. Um, On that note... Big Wolf. We will see you on Friday with the Dark Mirror Radio Show, and then we'll be back next Sunday at mm -hmm. 7 o'clock. With this one, Big a bit Wolof. scary Wolof, <laughs> and uh, myself, and uh, back with another top ten and whatever bizarre stuff I can find out in the week. So, paranormal events with police witnesses. Oh yeah, next week's one, uh, next week's review mirror show. We're going to do uh, was it top ten paranormal paranormal events that have been witnessed by police. So that should be an interesting one. Um, Thank you, James. Uh, take it easy, dude. And we will see you all again. So on Bye. That... No, I'm straight, but thank you. Um, so on that note, we will say cheerio, Robin. See you later. Stay safe because of uh, COVID. Bye.